Previously on the Entertainment channel, we removed the stock motor from our club car president. We sent the motor off to Plum Quick. The guys over there did the bandit upgrade to our stock motor. We are now able to hit speeds of 23 miles per hour by doing so. The stock speed was 12 miles per hour. This was a very easy install. I'll link this video and others in the description below. Next video, we installed a six inch lift kit from All Sports Manufacturing. On the same video, we installed some Trex 14 inch wheels with 23 inch all-terrain tires. The following video, we replaced the stock controller with a controller from Navitas. Also, it has on the fly programming on the dash. This gave us security, this gave us more speed, more so torque, but more safety as well. After these upgrades, we went ahead and added a 48 to 12 volt DC converter so we can start adding some accessories. In today's video, we're gonna go over the Bluetooth Party Bar G2 by Bazooka. Now once you have your party bar out of the box itself, you'll notice you have four mid-range speakers and two tweeters. Around both tweeters is gonna be LED lights. On each end of the party bar, you also have woofers. On the front of the party bar, you have a double LED strip. Now on the top of the party bar, you're gonna have seven integrated optional mounting nuts. It's gonna be six millimeter in size. On the bottom of the party bar here, you're gonna have a USB input. This is gonna be a 2.1 amp to charge your phone, and also you can plug a thumb drive into here and play music from the thumb drive. Down here is gonna look like two auxiliary inputs. One is gonna be an auxiliary input, one's gonna be an auxiliary output. Now you're gonna have two connectors here for power. The red one is gonna be your power input connector, and the black one is going to be your power output connector. Let's just say you wanted to run an amplified bazooka tube in your golf cart. Well, you could do that and run the power from this right here to your amplifier or to the powered sub and run your output for the audio channel output to tell the sub how to play and what to play. Now, when you get your party bar unboxed, you'll see that you have some buttons here. You can control the party bar manually through these buttons or you can control it through your uh, included remote control. Now the remote control will operate the audio, operate the LEDs, and it will operate the accessory output, so it's this right here. Now you do have two mounting legs and these are made out of metal. And you can mount them to go outside of the party bar or inside of the party bar. It's really up to your application. There's also gonna be two mounting bolts to goes with your party bar and an Allen head to uh, tighten that down. On your power wire, this is gonna be six feet in length and the fuse that is included is a 15 amp fuse. This is gonna be your accessory output power wire. It plugs directly into here and if you wanted to remove your party bar, you better remove that as well. These are two anti-vibration pads. The anti-vibration pads are used for the bottom of the mounts here in case you're mounting them to metal. So it's gonna make it a lot quieter and they're form fitted. So Bazooka includes three mounting bolts. You have a pair of two inch, a pair of inch and a quarter, and a pair of half an inch. You also have two nylon locking nuts, some large washers, some small washers, and an Allen key. They also give the option of using some studs these studs will screw into the top of your sound bar here. Now everything in the 24 inch will be the same as in the 36 inch. All of this right here will be included. So you have four ways of controlling your party bar. You have the party bar itself. You have the supplied remote control which comes with the party bar. You have your phone and there's an application you can get for this. Or you have a wireless remote. Now this wireless remote does have wires on it. And when they say wireless it means there's no connectivity between this and the party bar. The power and ground wire is for your backlight power. And it comes directly out the back so it can be hidden very easily. Now in order to power this right here sub up. We need to go ahead and connect power. Once we connect power, we need to go ahead and sync the Bluetooth between the party bar and the phone itself. Once we do this, it has power. We come right here and hit the M button. 
Bazooka audio. Bluetooth pairing. Now in order to pair the Bluetooth with the phone, it's gonna ask us for this right here, our pairing request, we're gonna hit okay. Bluetooth paired. We're gonna go ahead and open the application. Once the application is paired, you'll see there is a Bluetooth. You'll see there is a USB, a auxiliary mode, an LED, and a switch. To play music, we're gonna to go to Bluetooth. If you're playing from your phone here, you're gonna have the music already down here, so you can just select one, hit play. It's gonna start playing off your phone. You can turn the volume up and down from your phone, your supplied remote, the wired wireless remote, or the unit itself. I'm turning up and down with the phone. Before you go to the back button, we need to pause it. Once you pause it, now you can hit the back button. You can go to USB mode. This is the USB here. You can plug this in with a thumb drive and you can play music from the thumb drive or you can charge your phone from this. Now we're gonna hit back. The auxiliary mode is the same way. Auxiliary mode. So you have your auxiliary input and output on the very bottom. Remember one is for an amplifier output. We can hit back again. You have your LED switch. So this right here is your LED. Your dome light is on now. We can turn the dome light off. We can control the different shades. We can also hit the mode down here at the very bottom. Now it's on dome mode. If you wanted to turn it off, you hit the power button. Okay. So if you want to change the mode at the very bottom, the bottom left says M for mode. So we can go to the right here, the gradient. Once we do that, we can hit the power button. Then we can take the brightness up or we can take the brightness down. We can also take the speed of it up to make it go faster or the speed down to make it go slower. We can go back and the switch. The switch is going to control this switch right here. If we hit it, this guy actually has four here. It's going to be number one only. There you go. Now in order to sync the remote control here and the party bar here, first we need to remove power from the party bar. Once you have power removed, we're going to hit the ACC button at the top right and the play pause button at the bottom left. Hold them together. It will read connect. While it says connect, we want to hook the power wire up back to the bazooka tube. It says match OK and you see it flash twice. So once you have the power wire hooked back up, we're going to hit the mode button to power it back on. Bazooka audio, Bluetooth pairing. It says pairing right here. Once it's paired, it will say Bluetooth paired. Bluetooth paired. Okay, once it says Bluetooth paired, now you can go ahead and control your music straight from this remote here. You can hit the play button. You can change the volume up and down. You can select different songs right and left. We can turn the dome light on. We can hit the dome light off button here. To turn the accessories on and off, we hit this button here. Accessories on, accessories off. Now we can hit the dome light. 
You can go to gradient, you can go to fades, you control all the LEDs. So you want more sound than a 24 inch, maybe you want more sound than a 36 inch, where you could always purchase two of these party bars and you can sync them together. The bar that you're gonna sync, you need to unplug, which is this is 36 inch, it's unplugged. On the supplied power one, as it still has power, we're gonna hit the play pause button. Bluetooth pairing, TWS pairing. It goes to TWS pairing, it flashes like a yellowish green. We now hook the power up to the 36 inch. Once we have power applied, we're gonna hit the mode button, turn it on. Bazooka audio, Bluetooth pairing. TWS paired. So now the TWS is now paired between both units. Another good thing is sometimes you might have to disconnect your Bluetooth on your phone in order to sync them up and be sure to hook the Bluetooth up afterwards. As you can notice here on this remote, it says TWS OK. OK, we need to go ahead and sync the Bluetooth back up. Go ahead and hit this one here. It's connecting. Bluetooth paired. The Bluetooth is now paired. There's a yellow green light here. And on this one back here, you can also see it's a yellow green light as well. Once you get the app up, you can go to Bluetooth. Select your song. Hit play. Both units are playing. Domes on both. Now in order to turn the party bar off, we're gonna press and hold the power button for a long hold. Power off. If you want to turn the party bar on, hit the power button for a long hold. Bazooka audio. Bluetooth pairing. Bluetooth paired. The application will only play in Bluetooth mode what is downloaded to the phone itself. So if you want to play something else, you need to get out of the application. I like to use the Amazon store. Now everything is going to work on here just like it was on the app. So you can use this remote or this remote the same way as any other part of this setup here. You can hit play or pause from either one. You can change songs, volume up and down, even change the mode. You still do the dome, accessory on and off power the unit up on and off as well. So I have two sound bars. I have a 24 inch and a 36 inch. On this golf cart, I was aiming for the 36 inch to work perfectly up front and maybe about the 24 inch in the back. However, the 36 inch doesn't have enough room to mount up front. Now what I could do is I can slide the windshield down. I can slide these mounts up front mount like that. But what happens is the windshield itself does not have enough room to fully lock in the lock position. The 24 inch model fits great. I can fit it right up here. You know, anywhere up here, just center it up, drill two holes and mount it. And that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so I've added some tape to the under part of the roof here on both sides. I have these two pieces right here and I'm using these to help center up the bar. I'm going to be trying to center this middle portion of the bar between these two roof pieces here. I have the tape up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to rest my hand, my arm against the steering wheel and hold everything as closely as possible. I got this marker here, I'm going to mark out around. 
here and here. Now I'm going to be taking these anti-vibration pads that we opened from the uh, insulation package earlier. We're going to be using those. I'm going to place them up here and be sure that when you're mounting them, the hole here, since we're using our mounting brackets with the hole towards the inside, we're going to use these towards the inside of each, each side itself. Basically what I'll do is I'll stick it up here and I'll give us a little mark right there so it tells us where we need to drill. Do the same thing on this side. Now that we have our hardware done, our bolts are lined up. You know, always measure twice, drill or cut once. It looks good, I'm happy with this. Now in order to assemble the brackets here, we're gonna use the anti-vibration pads. We have the large lock washer on the very top. We have, we're gonna do the small washer on the bottom. Once we get it started, we're gonna use a 10 millimeter nut driver to tighten the nut up from the bottom and use a supplied Allen head to tighten the very top up. Now this is how you fasten the mount. Now you need to rotate it how you figure it's gonna sound the best. I'm gonna rotate it at a small incline towards my face. Go ahead and tighten up the hardware. Your Bazooka G2 party bar is now mounted. Now this is your fuse here and your power leads that goes to your 12 volt source. The problem is on this golf cart, I would like to feed these wires down the upright tubes on the inside of them. But I can't do that because of this fuse. Now on this fuse here, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off and not use it. And the reason why I'm not using the fuse in my application is in our last video, we installed a 12 volt DC converter. Now, because we did a 12 volt converter, if we did not add a fuse block with a fuse panel system, then I would needed to keep this fuse for protection. But since we've added that five gain fuse block, I'm gonna remove this fuse, use it in that fuse block, and power this same wire up. So in this case, I'm not going to need it. However, if you do not have a fuse block after your DC converter, you will need to keep this. Now, if you're gonna be running your wires through this down tube here, you got to know that anything with bolts like right here running through it could possibly jam the wire. So we wanna go ahead and remove those before we slide the wire into the down tube. Now on these presidents, this down tube cover here needs to be removed in order to gain access to the bottom of this down tube. This bolt in here is gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt. Now that we have the cover removed, we're gonna go ahead and take a T30 to remove these two uh, bolts here. Next up, it's time to run the power wire and ground wire down the golf cart. We're gonna run down this tube here. This is the upright to the windshield. On the passenger side, there's a hole. It's really off of camera. You can't see it, but it's right here. Uh, if you're gonna plan on running a subwoofer, or any other accessories, now is the time to run this wire as well. Okay, so off camera, I went ahead and extended these wires here. I used solder and iron and solder to extend them, black tape to cover that up. Next, you need to run them into the dash. This side piece here on this club car just unsnaps like so, there's gonna be a hole right here. Now, when you put the wire, now when you put this bar back into place here, this wire is gonna sit here. What we're gonna do is go ahead and run it behind the dash through that hole. Now, as you can tell, we have one bolt in, the wire is not crimped, there's no real hard connection and the wires going in the back back there. Now we just need to mount this one here, put this back together.
Now once you have everything back together, you can go ahead and put your cover back on. It may be hard to see, but I have the ground wire here and the power wire here going from the Bazooka Party Bar G2. This power wire here is going into the back panel of the fuse block. I put a 15 amp fuse in there. And actually, this is the one that came out of the fuse holder with the power supply. So this is the back of the dash remote here. And as you can see, they have supplied four female nuts here already built into the remote itself. Now in the package, they give you two uh, universal bolts. They give you two nuts and two washers to be able to mount it to. And these are very tiny. We're gonna screw these down into the sides here of each one. Now these mounting bolts here are about three and a quarter inches apart, maybe three and three eighths. And from each of the mounting bolts, so you're looking about an inch and a half or a little more than an inch and a half to the center from the bolt itself for the wire hole. So off camera, I removed the Navitas on the fly remote over. If you don't know what this is, I'll place a link above to show you how you can control your golf cart, secure it, give it more power, more speed and all in the link above. I move this on the fly programmer over and we're gonna actually mount the remote right here on the dash so it'll be out of the way. I'm just gonna drill my first hole right here. Once I have it in place, I'm gonna just grab this other one up and down here. What it's gonna do is give me a mark right here so I can go ahead and Line it up here. Now once I have that done, I'll go ahead and just drill the hole directly in the center between these two for my wire to go inside the dash. Drop everything in place. Once I have the Everything there. Next thing I need to do is go ahead and mount my washer nut from behind. Now what I did is I took this power and ground wire from the remote here. And I used some back taps. I used a back tap on this ground here. I also used the back tap on the power wire that's feeding the party bar itself. This doesn't pull enough current to, you know, go in here and add another fuse in here. It didn't come with a fuse, so I went ahead and just did it that way. Now when you switch the golf cart on, the remote control will power on. The bazooka bar will not power on until we turn it on with this power button here. So just do a long hold. Bazooka audio, Bluetooth pairing. Once it's paired, you can play music. I did not run a switched power here yet. Not sure if I am or I'm not ever going to do that and if so i can just take it and run down the frame again it's that simple this right here is a serial number tag i'm gonna go ahead and cut it off in the golf cart here i'm gonna keep this and i'll probably keep it in the factory box that all of this right here comes in either i'll take it to the outside other than that we're pretty much done so i added some half inch split loom to it and i also wire tied the wire and split loom to the grill side on this side right here uh, just keeps it from flapping keeps everything secure I think So 
with my final thought on the Bazooka Party Bar G2. Man, it's great. It actually sounds great for what it is. You know, you bolt it up, you run power in your ground, you connect it to your phone, and you go. I mean, how much simpler can it be? In my main golf cart, I'm running two five and a quarters. I'm running a Bluetooth head unit. I'm running two six and three quarters. I'm running an amplifier, and I'm running a 12-inch subwoofer. Now, if I could be able to take that, bolt it in with two bolts, add a power and ground to it, and then it sound just like my big golf cart does, you would have a dynamic stereo where you could just plug it in, take it out, boom, 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 and go. You're not gonna get that though. So so with that being said, I, I give it a thumbs up. I mean, this, it sounds great. It's easy to install. If I don't want it mounted on the golf cart for all summer long, I can unmount it, disconnect the power. I can mount it to the side of my house and use the AC, the DC adapter, and go to town. That's my final thoughts. Now, as far as settings go on the Bazooka Party Bar G2, you cannot adjust any settings but what you can do is you can go into your phone settings and adjust the equalizer for the adaptive sound of your phone and then you could uh, give it more trouble, more bass, whatever. So there you go. All right guys, I'm Ryan Fenners. Thanks for watching the Fentertainment channel. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, click the bell notifications. It lets you know every time I post a video. Also share this video and until next time guys, we'll see you later.